Hey, Jen, did you take my what the hell? Oh, hello, dear friend. Why is it stinking here? May I offer you some candy or a Ninja Turtle? Ooh, is that Michelangelo? No, 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 no. Look, you need to leave this room. You're getting weirder. Oh, what's the point of any of it? Halloween is another year away. You can always look for a job. No, I'm not gonna be doing that. Okay, then why don't you watch a movie or something? A movie? Yeah, it might make you feel better. Oh yeah, nobody reviews movies on YouTube. Are you joking? That's like 90% of YouTube. I can corner the market. The market's been cornered. All right, I'll do it. Those creak and the tombstones quake. Tombstones wait and wait. Happy haunts materialize. And begin to vocalize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. <laughs> what horror movie can I possibly review that hasn't been done a million times? Hmm. That sounds vaguely familiar. Alright, I'll download it. Six hours later. All right, the movie's all downloaded. Let's check it out. He's watching you. And he loves you. He's watching you. Oh. So this movie was made entirely by one person, Jimmy Screamer Claus and has a reputation for being graphic, hard to watch, and disturbing? Wait. When was this movie made? 2012? This movie came out in 2012? It should also be noted that this movie was created with Cinema 4D. To give you an idea of the capabilities it has, these clips were also made with the same software. And this isn't some cheap or free program either. If you want a temporary six month license, temporary, you're looking at about 600 bucks. <sighs> anyway, this movie consists of three chapters, the first one being Tainted Milk. Where did babies come from? Oh yeah, that sounds like a little boy's voice. Babies? You wanna know about babies, do you? Well, I'll tell you all about babies. Babies come from the mistakes you made as a child. Aw, suddenly I miss my dad. I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> There's gotta be a better way to say that. Don't blame this on me! You could have used a condom. What's a condom? What's a condom? Tommy's parents nonchalantly decide to divorce and his mom sends him to night school. In the rain, apparently. Tommy starts his mystical journey to school, based on that music, and runs into... Hi, Tommy. Oh, hi, Labby. God sent me to tell you that, that the child living inside of your mother is, is the Antichrist. Who <laughs> I can already tell I'm not gonna like you. Well, I don't know, Labby. Remember that time he told me the devil lived inside the barn? And made me murder all of Grandpa John Sheep. Seriously, all the voice acting is like this. So to convince baby Berkowitz here to commit his unborn brother's murder, Labby shows a topless pedophile getting her nipples licked by a baby while Labby spouts nonsense about the mother's milk turning every baby evil after the firstborn. There, I just spared you five minutes of his annoying, hard to understand voice. Breasts are a sin. They, they were given to women by the devil. Mine were given to me by a doctor. Do, do you even know where, where, where babies come from, T Tommy? They come from the Shadow Men. Shadow Men? So are you ready to hear some of the craziest rambling shit you've ever heard that's not on a street corner? You see, Tommy, when, when people get struck by lightning, it's, it's God's way of taking them to heaven. It's, it's like his hand coming down from the sky. But, but this makes the devil angry. So sometimes their shadows get burned into the ground. And, and, and the devil seeks his evil 
nectar in, into the soil and resurrects the fallen ones. The shadows wander around angry and jealous of, of, of the living. They move under the beds of couples, wait, waiting for them to, to procreate. They will sneak into the lady's tummy and, and take over the newly created fetus, tur turning it evil. Wait, so the devil created sentient beings from God's lightning victim shadow? And these shadows hide under couples' beds until they have sex to procreate. And then these shadow men go into the womb and make the fetus evil? Makes all the sense in the world to me. I've seen these shadow men under my mother's bed. I know you have, Tommy. One of them took over the baby in your mother's womb. <laughs> about this look this kid like nine or ten years old ten year olds are not this stupid tommy goes along with it because he's a moron and leads labby right to his parents who apparently sleep naked with no covers and did all that, did it? You know coroners know what animal bites look like, right? Uh, Flabby, oh, I don't feel so good. He wakes up in a Dada's wet dream, complete with a naked spinning Tommy and his parents with dog faces. Ugh. Look, I have issues with these segments, but I'll get into that way later. In this acid trip, we finally get a clear look at the Shadow Men's appearance, and wait, they look familiar. You know, the first time I saw these Shadow Men, I immediately thought of the Incubi from Ink. They have permanent smiles on their faces, they wear all black, they're malevolent creatures who whisper influence into their victims and linger by them. It's just a thought. Wake up! So Tommy wakes up, only to realize Labby has abandoned him and goes to talk to the lady in the well, only to run into this guy. Follow me. Let me show you something. Check this shit out. Who, who's that? He's the keeper of man's fears and the creator of his walls. Oh, Mr. Quackers, you are so smart. What is your greatest wish, Tommy? I... I wish my parents were still alive. Labby shows up again and tells the easily duped idiot that he can bring his parents back, but only for a price. And you want to know what that price is? <laughs> my what? Hmm. What's the best way for me to get my parents and baby brother back to life? I know! There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O. What the hell is that? Oh, what? Like you have a better way to bring dead people back to life or something. Well, it's okay. I'm a moron who thought bestiality equals the Necronomicon. So Tommy sits on his parents' bed without moving or having neighbors, teachers, or co-workers noticing this family hasn't been seen in at least two days. Oh, shut up, movie. It's too late to make him a sympathetic character. That brilliant first act is followed by chapter two, Liquid Memories, where we catch up with Tommy, who's just a little bit upset his whole family was murdered. Those are some tight pants. I killed myself the other day. No, not the candy shop operator. Comfort and chocolate and the miracle or two. 
What if I told you I found out that there is a gland in the back of your brain that holds all of your memories, and when you die, it expels the liquid? Now, what if I told you that I found a way to extract that liquid, and if you inject it into yourself, you can trick your body into opening up the gland early, and you can go in and edit your memories. You know, if we're being technical here, memories already kind of edit themselves over time, so... He does this memory editing thing so he can erase memories of death, by the way. But he has to kill people to get the liquid memories, so you figure it out. Eh, but enough about Tight Pants McGee, let's see what a random prostitute and her John are doing. So this guy just walks around without any pants on? And nobody says anything? Or calls the police? Oh, well, okay. You'll hear no kink shaming from me. You know, maybe about 10 years ago I'd called BS on this, but I've been on the internet. I've seen some shit. And randomly the John goes into a flashback to, I guess, some war where characters who look like they are lost on a green screen meander around. I can hear those smiles as they creep up on us. This Emoji Movie sequel's really gone off the rails. And an aggressive game of grab ass breaks out. The John has a freak out and attacks the prostitute who does very little to fight back. Back off! I'm not fooling around! Lady, he's got no legs. Just push Lieutenant Dan over or walk briskly away from him. Oh, who am I kidding? Who could possibly get away from someone with that speed? The pro gets her eye gouged out and she finally fights back with a bottle to the throat and does a silly looking crawl to the church tight pants is in. I've seen her before. Let her in. The shadowman pull the prostitute into the church where he slices her throat, harvests her memory juice, and injects it into his arm. Oh man, what are you doing? You're wasting all the memory juice. When he wakes up, he realizes he's not in his memories, but the memories of the woman he just killed. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm telling mom! No, you're not. Get back here! So, what was he doing this time? Torturing small animals again? Wait, uh-uh. How'd she smoke without a face? Maybe we should teach him a lesson. Movie! I promise I won't tell mom. But you have to tell mom. It's your job. Otherwise, how would she know what I've done? I can't be bothered to do another take. What are you doing here? I don't know. No one's ever asked me that before. Didn't you remember me? No! Piss off! You're trapped inside her mind. The, the mashed up memories of a whore. Uh, yet another scene I can't show. But I can give you the audio. Uh. Uh. Oh yeah, I'm right there with you, adult Tommy. I mean, oops, who is this guy? Uh. You know, I have a theory that this movie originated as a 3D fetish hentai, and then somewhere down the road, it ended up as this. Look, I love creepy imagery. It's one of the reasons why Jacob's Ladder is one of my favorite movies. But when you're shoving it in our face at all times, it loses its impact, and then it just becomes obnoxious. Join the carnival. We could ride rides and eat cotton candy forever and ever. The carnival. Hmm. <sighs> the carnival. Seriously, why do you say it like that? Make her feel broken inside. He's right. Who's right? 
We have to die together tonight. Mom! Mom! Huh, I guess he got over that whole killing my sister thing rather quickly. The carnival was one of my fondest childhood memories. I gave it to her. Wait, but her her memories are in your head now. How does this work? I don't feel anything this time. Find more liquid memories. Oh hell no! What did he think was gonna happen? If I wished hard enough, would it bring her back to this life? Yeah, because it worked so well with your parents, didn't it? Pardon myself that I... I am damn impressed he was able to shoot himself through the mouth when the muzzle was nowhere near his head when he pulled the trigger. That was either laziness on Screamer Claus's part, or he couldn't get the character model to look right. I know it's tough to do that. But enough about that, back to Tommy. Clean up your mess. Pick up the bodies. Now nobody will ever investigate. This leads us to the third and final segment of this garbage fire, the masks that the monsters wear. You know, you used to say, excuse me, brown bears liable smack a hoe if I don't have anything to hold my hand down. Man, I hate the new Nickelodeon shows. She was left barren after I was born. So this little weirdo's name is Ralph, and I gotta give the movie credit. At least with Ralph, they explain why the character sees these messed up things. See, Ralph was born with a parasitic twin on his face. Pigface Doctor explains that every once in a while, the twin's brain will kick back on, and it causes Ralph to seize and have hallucinations. It should also be noted that the movie goes out of its way to show Ralph's parents as hating him and loving his brother, but at no time do they refer the twin by its name. I just find it odd that they wouldn't have a name for this child they apparently love more than the living one. These characters are just so shallow and unlikable, it's like I'm watching a 2009 horror film. I guess it's just easier to make characters who are complete irredeemable assholes instead of trying to make them more complex, huh? By the time I found her, she was already broken beyond repair and nothing I say or do will ever change that. Would a school let him wear that mask? I really like your drawing. It's like she's got a light inside her. Ralph is in love with Sophie and decides the best way to get on her good side is to become buddy-buddy with her dad. He's probably gonna regret that later. She's famous, you know. Famous? Yeah. You mean to tell me that you ain't never seen one of her films? Oh, no. Don't go down this road, movie. You don't know what you're doing. So Ralph buys the tape and damn! You know, for someone whose parents hate him, he gets really good allowance. Anyway, he goes home and watches the movie, and while not graphic, I'm sparing you from the dialogue. Honestly, the only offensive thing about this movie is the fact that it thought it could tackle this subject without looking like a bumbling jackass. So, what did you think? She was crying. She was crying because you weren't the one fucking her. Yeah, remember that really gross kid in the seventh grade who sat in the back and picked his nose and said really nasty things just for a reaction? Apparently he grew up and made a movie. Sophie is punished for having the audacity to cry while being raped by being put in a contraption that would probably snap her neck in real life while Ralph goes for a walk and runs into- Oh god damn it! Get out of your life!
hate this dog. Ralph wakes up in the disturbing. Disturbing. Totally wishes it was Silent Hill World, where Laddie gives yet again some awful advice on how to get Sophie to love Ralph. <laughs> oh! Can I show you something now? So we're just not going to reference the dead cat, or...? This is my bug collection. My mom is terrified of bugs. She usually kills them. So whenever one gets in the house, I try to rescue it. But now they're stuck forever, which is kind of like being dead. Hey, I have an idea. Sophie takes Ralph to the only place that makes her happy. This is my garden. This is where I spend most of my time. They spend the whole day talking and releasing Ralph's bugs into her garden, and if this were a better movie, I'd say this is symbolic, but this movie's as deep as a rain puddle. Breathing. Then Ralph goes home where his dad chokes the shit out of him. Why you little my seed you're not of my seed you piece of shit i'm acting can't you see how angry i am by moving my arms i'm acting i'm so angry so angry this is me being angry look who's back for more and yes what you think is about to happen is about to happen this is your last chance to turn off the video have you met our neighbor ralph he's a handsome boy he's gonna be the star in our new film ralph what are you doing here? I'm going to be in in your your movie. What? Get out, Ralph! Please! All right, all right, all right. Ha! Told you, shitty Matthew McConaughey impersonation. You know when you read YouTube comments and can immediately tell it's written by an edgy fourteen-year-old? That's this movie. For f**k's sake, there's a point where the poor man's Matthew McConaughey tells Sophie to stick her finger in the parasitic twin's mouth. Which I'm also not gonna show, and I'm very disappointed in myself, and I should've reviewed Witch's Night Out. Which I might still do. I promise I'll be good always, always. So after you're done bleaching your eyeballs, Sophie is punished because reasons. Ralph gets punched by the redneck, makes this stupid face, and runs off where he ends up at Sophie's garden being eaten by his bugs. Oh, hey, Tommy. Hey, dogs are supposed to be man's best friend. to get away from him. You shut down. I have no idea what she just said. Ralph begs for the lady in the well to help, but she tells the little rapist he's on his own. There are bugs. They ate all my flowers. I'm sorry. Sophie laments about being constantly used and feeling justifiably betrayed by him. Despite being victimized repeatedly, she still remains childlike and sweet. That is, until she was betrayed by her only friend. So she shuts down. I'm tired of making people bleed. Sophie leaves and Ralph goes home to see his father watching his video. Speechless, huh? That's understandable. I, I know how it is. I've, I've fucked her before. <sighs> So Ralph takes a baseball bat and bashes his father's brains in, then he goes into the parents' closet, retrieves a gun, and shoots his mother, and I feel absolutely no pity for anyone in this family. Then goes and murders Sophie's dad in, I guess, a form of redemption. What? Ralph did that? Really? 
Well, since Labby has had such great ideas so far, he convinces this moron to cut his brother off his face. Sophie thanks him for saving her and he goes back to the well for some reason. <laughs> Man, I just can't catch a break. Don't leave me. I thought you loved me. She does love you. Do you know what I've done? Yes, I do. You're pretty messed up for an eight-year-old. In the morning, everything will be easier. I promise. What a twist! Are you ending here? Holy shit, what the hell did I just watch? This movie tries so hard to be memorable, shocking, and disturbing, but all I ever thought watching this was I could be watching something else. My problem with this movie is that there is no restraint. Everything has to be cranked to 11 at all times. Good movies with horror elements are subtle, creepy, and give you a feeling that there's something wrong. All this movie does is obnoxiously shove the creepiness in your face to the point that it becomes boring and you find yourself checking your watch to see how much longer the movie is. But you want to know the funniest thing about all this? I don't really hate this movie. Oh, don't get me wrong, this movie is not good, and I'm being kind with my wording here. However, I do see small pieces of love in it. All of these scenes that are playing while I'm talking are ones I felt were well done. There are scenes that are eye-catching, pretty, or unique. Despite my earlier criticism, I do like the way the Shadowmen look. A lot of the camera angles are interesting. Some of the creepy imagery is creepy and cool looking. I can tell that the creator loves his movie. Now I've heard people defend this movie on the sole basis that it was created by one person. And I respectfully disagree. A movie shouldn't be shielded from criticism for the sole reason it was made by one person. There are other movies and video games out there that have been made by a single person and they are amazing. The movie that's been playing while I've been talking is Voices from a Distant Star. It was also made by one person. And yes, I am aware of his new movie, When Blackbirds Fly. I haven't seen it yet, but just looking at the trailer, it seems his character models have improved. People move more fluid for the most part, and it looks like he's reined it in a little bit. As for where the dead go to die, I don't recommend it, only because it's such a chore to sit through. But if you're like me and have to see every horror movie regardless of its quality, I'd say a one and done is good enough. You can find it pretty cheap on eBay and Amazon, just expect to be put on some watch list if you do buy it. <sighs> see you next time!